Hi everyone, so today I'm going to show you how to measure migration lengths using ImageJ software for your gels. So the first thing you need to do once you've downloaded ImageJ and installed it is to load your gel image. So we're going to go to File, Open, and load the image of your gel. Okay, so this is what my gel looks like. And I'm going to move that band out of the way so we can see the gel fully. Um, the first thing you want to do is do some pre-processing. So first off, do we need to rotate the image? doesn't look like it. Our bands are, are, you want your lanes to be perfectly vertical as much as possible. Um, ours aren't, but if you, yours, um, ours are perfectly vertical, but if yours aren't, what you can do is go to image, transform, rotate, and then you can manually select the rotation angle or you can move the slider. We don't actually want to rotate our image because it looks pretty good, so we're going to hit cancel. The next thing you might want to do is crop out a region of your sample. But before you can do that, you need to select a rectangle. So maybe we're team one and we don't really want to evaluate team two samples. So we can eliminate that from our image. If you're team two, you need to make sure that you don't actually eliminate the protein band from the gel because that would be a problem. So you might need to just leave it in there. <clears throat> okay, so once you've done that, highlighted your region, you can say, we're gonna bring it down just a little bit. We're gonna say image crop. And then we only have this single region of interest. So the next thing we wanna do is remove our blue background. So we're gonna to go to process, subtract background. We can preview. And so it does lighten, lighten it up a little bit. This is more important if you've got a significant amount of blue in your background. Um, but this also can maximize the contrast once we convert to black and white. So it is a good thing to do. So we're gonna say, okay. Next step, and the final pre-processing step is to convert to black and white. So we're gonna image type 8-bit and convert that to black and white. Okay, next thing. Now we're ready to start measuring, but before that, we need to draw some guides on our, on our gel. So we're gonna draw two lines, one at the top, and we want this to be perfectly straight across. And so we're gonna draw that perfectly straight. If you hold shift while you drag, click and drag, it will constrain it to be either horizontal, 45 degree angle, or perfectly vertical. We want it to be horizontal, so we'll draw it across. Once you're satisfied with where it's at, um, you can adjust positioning with the, with the squares on the line. Hit Command D in a Mac or Control D in Windows, and it will draw the line on the figure. Um, we need to draw one at the die front, so the die front is roughly here on our image, and it can be a little hard to see, so use your best judgment. Um, if it's not straight, you need to draw it as if it's not straight. You don't want to constrain this to be horizontal if it's not perfectly straight. So we're going to draw it at an angle, and we're going to hit Command D, Control D to draw our line. Okay, so our die front distance is going to be from our top line down at the center of the lane to the bottom. And you can see that it's not perfectly vertical. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna leave that line at an angle and keep it centered. And we wanna go from our upper line to our lower line, and that's gonna be the length of our die front. So once you've got that line drawn, you can analyze it. So you can go up to Analyze, Measure, or you can hit Command or Control M, and it will bring up a results pane that shows the angle of the line and the length. Um, if it's your first time doing this, you'll probably have some other measurements in this table. I've removed those earlier. So you might have some other boxes checked if you go up to the results set measurements window. And what you can do is deselect all of these because we really don't need any of them for this analysis. All we care about is the length. Uh, you can't get rid of the angle. All right, so once you've got that first measurement for our die front, then we're gonna start taking measurements of all of our protein bands. So move it up to the base and take a measurement at each position. And this can go pretty quickly. If it's kind of hazy, use your best judgment as to where the edge is. All right, because our 
die front is not perfectly parallel with our upper edge, um, we are going to have to measure the die front for each lane. So that's what I'm doing here. So first measure the die front, then measure the protein band. And here it's a little hazy, so use your best judgment as to where that <laughs> band actually starts. And then we do the same thing for our denatured sample. We measure the die front, and then we measure the protein. All right, now that we have all our measurements, what we're gonna do next is import this into Excel. So we can either save it, whoops, we don't wanna actually, you can save the gel if you want to, and I recommend actually saving it. Um, you might not want to save over your original file. You probably want to save as something else, but we want to export our results as well. So we can save our results as you want to make sure you click on the results tab, save as, and then you can save it in a location that's convenient. Um, you can also just highlight all the cells, open an Excel workbook, and you can paste those in directly. Whoa, that didn't work. All right, and so it should actually show you. Just to make sure that you keep track of what each length is referring to when you paste it in. So make sure you label everything in Excel um, before you stop working for, for a time being. Um, and then you can always come back to it later. So that's the first part of our process. Um, next step, I'm gonna show you how to actually process the data in Excel so that we can generate molecular weights for our unknown samples.